Street art is a contemporary form of art that is always carrying some sort of social or political narrative. Although some consider it a type of vandalism, it quickly became the most popular way of raising voices in ways that traditional art would not allow. By far the most famous street artist would be British man Banksy, who inspired millions of his paintings placed on walls and buildings. Today we decided to explore street art in Warsaw, the capital of Poland. With its vibrant history and extremely modern style, it attracts tourists from all around the world with its huge politically involved murals. Very quickly we noticed that a lot of restaurants and brands use street art in order to advertise their products. As I was trying to say, but you can't hear me because of the wind, we decided to start our trip in the city center of Warsaw, more specifically Old Town, which is the part of town we usually show tourists since it's the most historical and, according to others, the most beautiful. Right now we're finding ourselves in the middle of what I call the Chopin Square. Because we're right next to the University of Music, everything has to be Friedrich Chopin themed. Therefore, right now we're right next to the Museum of Friedrich Chopin and we're heading to the Great Mural of Friedrich Chopin. This portrait, made by artists from the Good Looking Studio and Beata Barakoslivinska, is 300 meters squared. It took a week to paint and the title is Chopin Forever Young. According to the artist, the goal is to inspire younger generations with his work, which is why it has to be contemporary and outside the box. Although this specific wall is reserved for Chopin only, the design of the painting is going to change every five years. It also is a great choice to put him in such a tourist area since he, as in Chopin, is probably the most famous Polish person ever, which makes it a lot more relatable and understandable for the tourists. We're taking a quick walk to the business center of Warsaw in order to look for probably the most famous street art in the entire country. Blue, an Italian artist famous worldwide, chose this place for his work entitled Soldier Marionettes in 2010. You can tell that he tried to make a commentary on the dark era of communism by adding the USSR symbols on the helmets, combined with the dollar signs. Back in 2012, they actually tried to cover the mural with a different artwork, but the town of Warsaw successfully pushed on keeping it. Now it's probably one of the most viewed tourist attractions in the city center. Next, we took a walk to Vola, which is a huge neighborhood, so it would be a little difficult to define it. However, uh, I actually lived in this part of the city for a while, and something that I've noticed a lot is that the inhabitants actually have this cool ideas of painting over trash cans, because most of the buildings are very old and not really aesthetically pleasing. Therefore, uh, basically every neighborhood, I guess, yeah, I could call it this thing. Every neighborhood is responsible for keeping the trash cans and the walls as colorful and bright and positive as is possible. Our next mural is a 400 meter work created by Igor Hoda, also known as Aqualupa, a designer, illustrator and a street artist, of course. The idea was to cover up a huge empty wall in the Vola city center hall. This abstract painting is fully inspired by the history, culture and identity of Vola, which honestly isn't known for anything specific, probably due to its size, but also for the fact that a lot of people living in Vola simply do not come from Warsaw. Uh, so it was an attempt to build community among the inhabitants. As we continued driving around Warsaw, we noticed that street art is pretty much everywhere where we looked, so it was really difficult to choose only a few murals to uh, to discuss because, as you can see, they're pretty much omnipresent and they're huge. So if somebody ever wanted to maybe discover all of the Warsaw street art, I would recommend giving yourself at least a month. For our next mural, we decided to step a little bit outside of the center. We went to a neighborhood called Praga, which is 
famous for its high danger and uh, amount of criminal behavior. That is at least the stereotype of it. I personally live in there, so I know for a fact that it's not true. However, it is the kind of place that tourists have been heading towards more and more often because you can tell it's a lot more authentic than most other places. We were looking for this beautiful floating castle mural that used to attract a lot of tourists, but instead we found a really ugly, very contemporary building. Something that we did find though is that adorable little statue on a building that said was from 1985 which is truly unbelievable for Warsaw because all buildings are new, no building survived the war so the fact that we found it is truly a great discovery we made. For our last mural we went to a completely different part of the city that tourists don't come to at all because there's truly no reason, honestly, and we noticed that is the first or maybe second mural that has any text on it. So. This one says Człowieczy Los, which basically means human faith. Um, it's a song by Anna German, who was a very famous singer in the 60s, so that's already sort of a bow down to uh, culture and history. However, what we found interesting is that if you create such a huge mural in such a busy part of the city, is it because you only want the locals to be able to know what that means? Because the ones in the city center are a very abstract art, therefore anybody at any time can look at them and interpret them however they want. But this, honestly, is obviously aimed at a very certain group of people. Overall, it was pretty obvious and clear that Warsaw does use street art in order to build community that it does not have due to the unfortunate events of World War II. So yes, if you ever come to Warsaw, definitely check out at least some of the graffitis we have and maybe look for these adorable little Virgin Marys in buildings that can remember the 19th century, which is extremely rare, but as you can tell, it's not completely impossible to find.